Hello, hopefully you're uh, all well today. Um, another cold day, um, winter being what winter is. Um, I've been asked to uh, give my testimony of uh, my conversion uh, to uh, finding the truth that is um, Christianity. The the turning from sin but still being a sinner and the struggle at times to um, I suppose deal with that sin that is within us all but know that even though we're sinners we are still loved, cherished, known by our Lord Jesus Christ uh, which is always a tremendous reassurance. Um, I suppose when I think back, um, I remember going to church as a little boy. I remember attending Sunday school, hearing all the um, Bible stories, going back to um, the Old Testament, Moses, Parting of the Red Sea, um, my first, um, my first history. I suppose I was. I, 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 I like. I like my history, and that these stories resonate with me still. As I read the Bible in the Old Testament, I hear names like Solomon and David, Moses, uh, Ramesses. All these names for so long ago. I remember them from being a little boy and hearing Bible stories back in uh, my my parish church, Castle Hill and Air. Um, but in saying this, um, my connection with church was very limited. Um, occasionally attending with my mother, um, attending the local parish church at Castle Hill and Air to from. Uh, my local school, both uh, primary and secondary, singing some fine hymns, hearing some sermons about this chap's uh, this chap uh, Jesus, and hearing about the relates and so forth, um, and taking it all into the degree a little boy can, but not taking it tremendously seriously because you have lots of other things on your mind, um, and going to Easter service and going to Christmas service and singing carols and so forth and so on. I didn't come from a particularly Christian background at all. My mother occasionally attended church for communion. Um, I attended the odd wedding and so forth and so on. But I wasn't particularly interested in, in uh, Christianity. I was respectful of Christian beliefs. Um, there were churches and our churches everywhere. Uh, they hadn't all gradually been converted to all sorts of other things. Um, and I happily continued my secular, agnostic uh, journey, um, doing my nurse training eventually uh, in Ayrshire, eventually going to Fife. Um, again, not not often going to church very, very rarely looking at the Bible. I was very impressed by Jesus Christ, the great man, I thought, but uh, a nasty end. And if uh, something like that happens to him, he probably either deserved it or if it was a mistake, then frankly, what did it have to do with me? However, as I grew older and as I came up to Aberdeen to change jobs and so forth. I I did find myself thinking there was more to life than what I was leading. I don't know what that was. I didn't know what it was. But there was a gap. There was a a space, a hole, some kind. When you search for that um, in, a, in, a, in a modern society in various ways. One of them be um, drink, women, 
whatever. All sorts of ways of living your life. But these seem to me as pleasant as they might seem at the time and in the short term to be fundamentally flawed, short term, again human, um, not filling that hole, that gap that had to be filled. But you go with the flow, you get on your job, you work hard, so forth and so on, you have friends, you lead the life that is expected of you to some degree. But I found once I was in Aberdeen, um, I was in a particular place working and I met a, a particular woman um, and over time that led to going out, getting to know this individual and this individual uh, was my wife, my wife of now, friend, Frances Fletcher as she was then, who was a Christian, quite happy to say she was a Christian. And although curious and respectful, really wasn't that particular aspect, wasn't my particular business. Until she asked me one day to go to church with her. I could have easily said no one, I don't think it would have made a great deal of difference, or I didn't think it would make a great deal of difference at the time. But she took me along to her church that she was attending in uh, Old Hebron, Chapel Street. Met lots of nice folk. Sang hymns, heard, heard, them, heard, them, heard the message. And I have to say, it did start me wondering and thinking. And I had a Bible in the house. When I was growing up, there were Bibles in the house. They weren't read very much, but they were there. And I, I carefully had looked at uh, the New Testament when I was a lad. You get your, your Gideon's Bible and you flick through it and then you put it in the house somewhere in a gal of dust. But when I was home, I, as I visited home on a regular basis, uh, I came across my Gideon's Bible. Although, uh, uh, um, St. James's version, I was able to come across that NIV version uh, around the same time, which I was able to grasp a little bit better. And over the terms of our relationship with Francis, I went to church more. I gained more perspective, I read more, I looked at the word more, our relationship deepened. And she said herself, and she has said to me since then, that she thought that, um, she thought that she had a purpose within this relationship, not just a matter of falling in love, which we were in the process of doing, but there was more to it than that. And that again made me think and wonder and read the, the text a little bit deeper um, and one thing I've always enjoyed singing uh, I'm not a very good I don't have a very good voice but I enjoy singing and one particular hymn um, the famous hymn Guide me, O God, great Jehovah. Um, I remember singing it one day when I was, as I say, falling in love with Francis. We'd been going out for a long, long time and we were heading towards maybe a more serious relationship, a very much more serious relationship. But she made it clear that she was a Christian, I was not. And we sang this, this wonderful, this amazing hymn, Guide me, O God, great Jehovah. Um, then it did affect me. It was beginning to affect me. It wasn't just the wonderful words, the tune, the subject matter, but I was changing. Not just because of the love of this good woman, this godly woman, because that was that was part of it, of course. But I was changing. I was seeing that there was truth, and light, and forgiveness in this book. Um, and eventually, a short time after that, after this singing this time, although I'd sung it before numerous times, I came to the realisation I needed Jesus Christ in my life. I needed a rock. I needed a foundation. I needed the truth in my life. I wasn't 
saying that there was going to be no doubts. There are doubts still. I'm a weak man, a sinful man, and I realise this. And that's not going to change in the sense that humankind from the from the fall has been full of sin. But the, the, the blood of Christ, from this New Testament, it was clear, especially in reading John, that, that, that this man, this Jesus Christ, was the Word, was the way, was the Son of God incarnate, a walking, talking God, um, which of course should be impossible, but it wasn't. And that he, he, he knew his purpose on this world as clear as a straight road, a straight path, the way, and the only way to God was through him. And I decided I would, I would give my life to Christ, that he was my saviour. I, I remember I was coming, we were coming to, um, oh God, Ben, it was a Queen's Cross, Queen's Cross in Francis's, um, I think she was driving a Nissan Micra. And it came to me. No, yes, Nissan Micra. And it came to me. Why are you swithering, John? Why are you doubting? Why are you thinking, no, this is the time to make a decision. This is what you believe. You, you fall in love with this woman. God has made this happen. Coincidences, coincidences. I can tell you of coincidences that led to me to become from Aberdeen to, from Kirkcaldy to Aberdeen, from here to Kirkcaldy, so forth and so on. But the decision was made for me in that car. But it was triggered by the couple of years before that and by singing this, this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful hymn. Um, that's my story. That's how I came to be uh, on the path that we are all trying to follow, the straight path, the narrow path toward that gate. And I know it will be open for me because my Saviour is Jesus Christ. I don't really believe in coincidence anymore. Coincidence doesn't really click at all. Luck is a word. Fortunate is a word. Good fortune, what does it really mean? It's all in the hands of our God, our Lord, and um, His Son, Jesus Christ. Um, I always think of John. I always think of the Gospel of John when I think of why I find myself here. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, but all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And that light was Jesus Christ. I was in darkness. I just didn't realise it. The darkness of... Um, Believing I could get through life without any any root, any rock, any foundation. That's obviously rubbish. I found the foundation in our Lord Jesus Christ and in my beautiful wife, who helped lead me there through, um, through the power of Jesus Christ. So um, hopefully I haven't ran on and hopefully that this, this uh, tells you something of me and why I am where I am. And um, thank you. Uh, thank you for listening.